the number one thing that I guess mass media or traditional media is saying affected this particular crash is going to be uh, covered in this article by WCCF Tech. I just pulled this article. It's by Jason Wilson. Uh, it came out, let's see, yesterday. Russia, the world's third largest crypto miner to ban both GPU mining and usage of crypto. So let's get into this today. Russia's central bank announced the possible banning, that's a keyword, possible banning, of the use and any sorts of crypto mining, GPU, et cetera, or of cryptocurrencies on Russian territory. So uh, consider the source here, WCCF Tech is a tech website. They focus a lot on PC gaming. And so when you see the title essentially say GPU mining, it's important to note that what we're actually talking about here is any sort of crypto mining is what is stated in the article. So. If you read by the title, you would be like, oh, just GPUs are being banned, not ASICs. But if you go into and dig into this, it does appear that they're talking about ASICs as well. So always consider the source. And somebody asked me to do this for you guys. Is that good? Is that good for you guys? Is that better? I think so. All right. So let's get into it. It's a little harder to read this way, actually. <laughs> it's okay. I'll adjust. Uh, so the ban on crypto mining and usage continues to travel worldwide from Asia's crackdowns last year to the United States concerns on severe risks with digital currencies and the possibility of sabotage to monetary and financial institutions and systems. You have to keep in mind here, guys, that, um, you, you basically, we have a majority of countries that want to control the, let's see, how do I explain this? The countries that value servitude over sovereignty are the first to act on the banning of cryptocurrency. And that should tell you everything you need to know about cryptocurrency from the perspective of people that want to obtain control. All right. I think that's the best way I can state that. Initially, the Russian government contended against digital currencies for possible uses in terrorism and money laundering. What do they do the first time they want to, whenever they want to remove the rights of the individual, they demonize whatever is enabling those rights. This is just how it functions. So whenever you see them targeting something and saying, oh, well, bad stuff can be done on it, then you know. We're talking about a government that's led by a guy that slaughtered a lot of people too. So. Consider the source once again. The Central Banks of Russia states the, the theoretical markets predominantly defined crypto's rapid shift, noting that cryptocurrency showed similarities of an economic pyramid, cautioning of probable swells in the financial markets, jeopardizing the economic strength of its citizens. The Russian Central Bank suggested preventing any financial body from enacting any business with digital currency, instructing to halt and dissuade any transactions involving the sale and purchase of crypto to finance fiat money. This order also includes any exchanges that work primarily in cryptocurrency. Binance, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchange systems, plans to open dialogue with Russia Central Bank to protect crypto enthusiasts and users. Here is a quote from the head of the Binance Financial Stability Department. Elizaveta Danilova. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get better at these things one day. For now, there are no plans to ban cryptocurrency similar to the, to the experience of China. The approach we have uh, proposed will suffice. <clears throat> Right now, there are no current restrictions on owning any cryptocurrency. This ban will strain active users who, as a community, have amassed an annual transaction volume upwards of $5 billion. Okay, so pretty high up there. Joseph Edwards of crypto firm Solrise Group stated that the report would not hurt crypto mining Russians. Moscow, like Beijing, is always rattling its saber over crypto bans, but Russia has never been a pillar of any facet of the industry in the same way as China has been at times. I think that's talking about the separation between the government and the miners themselves. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
And I think what we had is essentially because of the way the Chinese government functions, they are much more integrated into the companies that operate within their borders. And Russia does, doesn't quite have that same control. Whether or not they want to have that control uh, is a whole other discussion. The Central Bank of Russia's recent report could also arise from the energy consumption plaguing parts of the country, including Kosovo, where Serbian minorities have continued to enact revenge on the governing body by refusing to pay for necessities such as energy costs. The Kosovo government has funded those areas due to the glooming human rights issues that would unearth from neglecting the individual's needs. All right. So there you go, guys. Essentially, this, uh, I guess, this article and this uh, people, there are a lot of people are going to call FUD. Uh, it's just Russia throwing more FUD at it, trying to get in cheap, whatever. As far as all of that goes, that'll be your typical trader analysis of it. Now, historically, um, on this channel, we've covered a million times the possibility of bans happening in various different countries, including China. Uh, for the longest time, even on the last time when China said they were going to ban cryptocurrency mining and cryptocurrencies, I was like, oh, they're always saying that. They're never going to do it. That's how I kind of felt about it. It's just China fudding again, whatever. Well, they actually did do it. So is there a possibility that Russia does do this? Yes. Will they be as effective as China would be the conversation that needs to be had? Uh, they clearly aren't even effective enough to uh, make people pay for their power in certain areas. Of course, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not, I guess, a geopolitical expert or anything along those lines, whatever. It's more of just a poke of fun of like, I don't think they have near as much control over their people or the people within their borders as China does. That's just how I feel about it. So even though they may put like some sort of law or rule or ban in there at the bank level and the government level, does that translate over into reduced hash power within the borders of Russia? Eh, maybe, maybe not. At, at any rate, if there is a reduced amount of hash rate it will be good for people that are not within the borders of Russia, you know, meaning that we would be able to potentially mine more at a lower difficulty or buy cheap parts. Of course, I thought we were going to get cheaper parts from China for ASICs over stateside with the ban over there, but that doesn't seem to be proving true, at least yet. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.